Good morning and God bless you. Good morning and God bless you. It was so good I had to say it twice. <laughs> My name is Pastor Sadie Thompson and I am co-pastor of He is Risen World Outreach Ministries. We are located in the beautiful city of Church Point. Our address is 122 South Main Street, Church Point, Louisiana, 70525. You can meet us every Sunday at 11 a.m. and come and break bread with us, the word of life, which is Jesus Christ. Well, guess what? It's Monday, y'all. <laughs> and it is time to get into the word today. I guess you say, well, Pastor, what you going to talk about today? I'm so glad you asked. I am so privileged and honored to, to share some time with you today. And I want to also put a plug in for my husband. His show is Wednesdays at 2 p.m. from 2 to 3. You get to hear the bishop, the senior pastor of the church. Uh, and uh, I really and truly enjoy him, not because he is my husband. I'm grateful to say that, but because I enjoy his teachings. He truly does have a now word right now for us. And I have one also. And we're going to talk about, I know it's football season and this is the place for football lovers to be. This is who that nature, nation. But this is what I want to talk about. I don't want to talk about who that. I want to talk about the Lord of Lord, the kings of kings, the great I am. His name is Jesus. J-E-S-U-S. -S. That's who I want to talk about. And I want to put you on the defense. Defense. Just repeat it after me. That's the topic of today. Defense. To be on the defense means you're going to be in a protective position. You're going to cover your <clears throat> vital points or, or points of entry. You're going to keep your eye gates protected, your ear gates covered where they can't be attacked, your heart, your vital organs. So what are you talking about, Pastor Sadie? What are you saying? Make it clear. Make it plain. What are you trying to convey to the people this morning? I'm talking about being on the defense with the word of God by putting on your armor. Yes, you are in a warfare, and just like the United States Army give you helmet, boots, gun, bullets, the word of God has weapons of mass destruction for the enemy. It's called the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the sword, which is the word of God, the shield of faith, your feet shone with the preparation of the gospel. This is for you today who loves Lord, who wants to live an overcoming life and want to be victorious in the things of Christ. That's right. I said victory. There is victory in the name of Jesus, beloved. And the, the sooner that you begin to comprehend that, the better that you will, will be because the word of God will heal you everywhere you hurt. So if you're discouraged this morning, you're feeling hopeless this morning, you have a spirit of heaviness this morning, you're broken hearted. You're disappointed. People let you down. You got more month than the money has. You have more month, more month in the month than you have money. All of those things can afflict you. But today, for these next 50 odd something minutes, you're going to rise again and put on the whole armor. You're going to be in the defense, baby, because we're going to tackle the things that will come against your faith. And the word of God said, there is no weapon, there is no weapon that is formed against you. Discouragement, get out. Disagreement, argument, get out. There is no weapon that is formed against you. And intimidation and bullying. You know, people can bully you also with their words, but you will not cart cow down to that because you know exactly who you are and whose you are in the word of God. So let's go there. Defense. 
to be on the defense, we are protecting our eye gates, our ear gates, our mouth, a point of entry that the enemy can come in. And the most critical part that we're going to deal with today is putting on that helmet of salvation. You've got to pull the helmet, or I like to call it a party hat, on your head so that you can ward off, can beat down the word of the enemy that will war against your mind. Why are you saying that, Pastor? Because whatsoever man thinketh, so is he. If you were to make a journal of the things that you would think about in your own thoughts throughout the day, for just one day, at the end of the day, you would be shocked to, to realize some of the thoughts that you uh, have been thinking. But now we're going to come against that enemy because the, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. What is the strongholds? Old mindsets. Words that were spoken over you as a child that people said that you can't. You're lazy. You're stupid. You're dumb. But God has called you beloved. He has lifted you up and created you to be a new creation in the image of God. You now have a spirit of excellency. You want to think like God. You want to be like God, line up on line, precept on precept. You are God chaser, and you are being proactive because when you go after God, you are proactive. You're going after the word. Why are you saying this with such passion? Because the word of God is passionate. It will compel you to go forward. See, that's part of our problem, some of us. We like a bear making big tracks and going nowhere. Just standing in a circle. Ain't move. Just praising God, thanking him for everything. And have it move forward in the things of God. You are staying back. In tradition, God is doing a new thing today. He's raising up an army of people who want to worship him. The scripture says, but, the, but God is what? Looking for true worshipers to worship him in spirit and in truth. Come on here, somebody. I'm talking about that helmet of salvation. It is going to cover your mindset. We're going to pull down the strongholds and replace it with the information that God says who we are. You are kings and daughters of the Most High God. You are a new creature, shaped in the word of God, given letting God take control. Let this mind be in you that is in Christ Jesus. Don't let your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. Abide in me and I will abide in you. This is an invitation, people. Everybody wants to be saved, but they just don't know how. By receiving the Lord Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and personal Savior, it's just that simple. You don't go to hell, and hell is a real place. There's two things that are in, that. <laughs> will not be happening in hell. I don't care what people say. There's no exit and there's no water. Can't leave once you get there. There is no B strategy. <laughs> the A strategy was to receive Christ while you were alive. B is over. <laughs> you forget about it. It's a wrap. There's no way out. <laughs> and there is no water. There you, you will thirst for water, but there is none for you to drink. Go back over into the story of the rich man. Uh, uh, and he was in, in, and he said, in, and the scripture says, in hell did he lift it up his eyes. And he said, Father Abraham, if you would just send, send one of them and, and just dip your finger in the water and just give me, just dip your finger, just give me a drop of water, I'd be happy. But then he said, now, I want you to go send somebody else uh, send somebody from the dead to go talk to my brother. He said, if they're not listening to the people that are alive, they certainly ain't going to listen to a dead man. See, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all of these things will be added unto us. 
what things, all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Let's go back to the helmet. I don't want to stray from that. The helmet of salvation on the defense. You're going to guard your thoughts. The scripture says, let's go over there to 2 uh, Corinthians 10 and 4. Defense, protectiveness in a protective mode. You're not going to allow people just send you any kind of wishy way. You're going to stay on track and you're going to be stayed focused. You're not going to be on the offense, which is you're offended by the things that people say and do. You're going to be on the defense because you realize the offense just wants to get you into your flesh so that you can act out carnally and then, then they can accuse you of your reaction to their behavior. We just gonna bust the devil wide open today with his strategies. Let's go over here, 2 Corinthians 10 and 4. I've read it before, I'm gonna read it again. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of God and having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. In other words, you don't have to worry about the people who do you wrong because you're obeying God. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. You don't have to get the people back. God is going to take care of his own. God's eyes go to and fro, beholding the good and the evil that all men do. And believe you me, it may sometimes people say, well, God take too long to, to, to chastise people. No, 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 he don't. Look at your life. How many years did it take before you truly surrendered to God and said, not my will, but thy will? Was it 30 years? Was it 40? Is it 50? Lord knows. Is it 60? I'm just saying. See, God knows that there is a set time and an appointed time that a man will own up to his deeds and say, yes, Lord, I am now ready to surrender my life unto you. Until that time, God's got this. And God's retribution won't be like our retribution because all we want is a penny for the pound of flesh that the person did to you. But God knows how to touch that heart and that mind. And you have no idea what that person is thinking about or what they're processing during the period of time that they surrendered their life unto God. Let God be the judge and the jury for your enemies, and he will revenge, avenge all. The scripture is talking about this. This is the good thing that I want to get back to. Casting down imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So in other words, you cannot continue acting out or your behavior doing it your way, having a Frank Sinatra moment. I did it my way. Well, no, you don't want to do that. Because the B-I-B-L-E, the basic instructions before leaving earth, it's not doing it your way. It's surrendering your will to the way of God. Now, if you have a different agenda, that's on you. But your agenda needs to line up with the word of God. It's that simple. And guess who gets to do that? You. <laughs> Everybody is going to be responsible for themselves. You're going to get to do that because you're the one that wants to pull the helmet of salvation on. You're the one that wants to cover your heart, the vital organs. You're the one who's suited and booted with weapons of mass destruction to come against the enemy that wars against your mind. You and God, that's who. Can't, no wear, can't nobody wear your shoes the way that your shoes, even though if you got a size 8 and your girlfriend has foot is a size eight and you worn them shoes they're not gonna fit the same way they fit her foot because these are your shoes you have stretched them to fit your foot whether it's wide narrow or small or long however that's your shoe and it fits your foot your foot 
the word of God will fill you and fit you as tailored made exactly just for you. That's the awesome kind of God. Listen, listen. There's another thing about the strongholds. What do you mean? That old behavior. Well, what do you mean by that? There's another way. James 4 and 7 says this. Submit yourself unto God and resist the devil. Submit yourself unto God and resist the devil. So in order to submit yourself to God, you're saying, yes, God, I want to line up with what you're seeing. You are in agreement. It's not just the doers of the word. I'm sorry, it's not the hearers. Blessed are those that not only hear the word, but blessed is the ones that do the word. That's being proactive after the word of God. It's an action verb. It's an action. It's action. Love is action. Faith is action. Temperance is action. Joy is action. Anybody said this morning, start leaping. Leap for joy. Reach up and grab it. Put it on today. It's action. Being proactive. Active, going after, not just sitting on the way on the on the dock of the bay waiting for the ships to come in. No, get on that boat and sail that boat, and go after God with your faith. Don't need a whole lot of faith. You just need a little bit. The grain of the seed of the grain of a mustard seed. That's how much faith you need. It's very tiny. But once the mustard seed begins to grow, you got a big harvest. A big harvest. There's so many examples of faith in the body today. I mean, in the Bible today. So many examples that we could go on and on and on about that. But listen, now, all this stuff that I'm talking about is like a prerequisite before you're actually putting on your armor because you don't want to put your armor on and it's just like putting on your clean clothes when you get up in the morning. You don't want to put on your nice suits or your jeans and your T-shirt and you ain't had a bath. Ain't put no deodorant on. Ain't comb your hair. Didn't brush your teeth. Sleep is still in your eyes. And you putting on them clean clothes, that beautiful suit, them iron jeans. You putting them on funky. It just don't work. <laughs> and then you have the audacity to put some cologne on. <laughs> You're going to blow everybody up. Because <laughs> that is a new fragrance that you have just created. <laughs> El Funkio. <laughs> I'm sorry, I tickle myself sometimes. <laughs> Have you ever seen it? I've seen it. People ain't washed, <laughs> and they put on some that Axel, that spray, and thinking that they killed all the germs. No, sweetheart, you just <laughs> took it to a whole nother level. <laughs> Wash. Get the dirt out. Wash the renewing of your mind. Wash. Let this mind be in you. Wash. And then you're going to put on righteousness. Ah, did I throw you with that word? Righteousness. I, ain't nobody righteous. Ain't nobody perfect. Ain't nobody. I can hear somebody saying that, sitting in their seat, looking all dignified. Ain't nobody righteous. <laughs> well, that sounds like you're very self-righteous right there. But righteousness, right standing with God, putting on the behavior of God. Well, what do you mean? See, once you get to lining up with this word, your behavior is going to change because love is going to be your filter that you look through everything. The scripture says, don't be lying to your brothers and to your sisters. Just speak truth. Speak the truth in love. Speak the truth in love. Let's... Um, let me go back over this away. Um, it's 1 Thessalonians 5 and 8. And it says, 
But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. What are you hoping in? You ain't hoping in nothing. You're hoping in the Lord. In this case, hope is, is, is his might, his strength. My confidence is in him. My confidence is not in my ability. I'm very limited in my ability. But greater is he that is in me, that is in the world. Man, I have unlimited access. Because now that I'm agreeing with the word of God and I'm asking God for guidance, maybe he, God might be telling me, you know, you need to go back to school. It's never too late to go and enroll in school. Well, you know what you did? I, and your mind may be saying, well, I didn't do well when I was a kid. Well, baby, you're not a kid anymore, so your understanding is better now. You can go online. Maybe you just need to go to the library and, and check you out some different books. Well, I can't read for a long period of time. I don't understand that. They have books on audio, too. You can check those out also. See, the thing of it is, we got to, the scripture says to ask, seek, knock, and the door will open. It didn't say complain, gripe, and wish that the door would be open, but it said to ask, Seek and knock, or seek, ask, and knock, however you want to go, but you got to look. You got to move from your comfort zone and allow God to push you in the right direction. He said the steps of the righteous man is ordered by the Lord. The steps of the righteous man, again, we're back to righteousness. You're putting it on because now you have agreed with the word and you want to act accordingly. You will know how to act because I promise you, say something that is out of character. Perfect example. If I say, oh, you people, so, 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 and so, don't you know that the Holy Ghost will check me and say, why did you say that? I didn't tell you to say that. That was you. We have got to listen. The scripture says exactly, my sheep heareth my voice and none other will they respond to. See, the wisdom of God is, is supposed to be entreated easily and gently. It's supposed to be put out there like the cookies on the table where the kids can reach up and get it. It should be easily understood. If you don't understand it, let's come together. Let's reason. Let's break it down again so you can get it. But it comes from a desire of wanting to first, of wanting to. Because Jesus is a gentleman. He will not force himself upon you, but wanting to. I want to do better. And it's in us to want to do better and to want more. There's nothing wrong with wanting more, more of him, more of life. Life does not exist of waking up, eating, sleeping, and walking around and chilling. No, God has created you for purpose and for destiny. And when purpose meets your destiny, before purpose meets your destiny came preparation. You were on the backside of the mountain just like Moses. They told him he was going to be when he was young. You're going to be the deliverer. You're, gonna, you're the one that's going to deliver the children from Egypt, from, uh, from Egypt. You're the one that's going to deliver them from Pharaoh. And what did he do? He saw his brother when he was a Jew. He was in the, in, in the uh, Egyptian household. You got to read the life of Moses, how he was born and how his mother. I mean, that's faith. Everything was, was faith was in place. And as he stood who he was, and then as he killed that man, the first thing the devil do, he's the accuser. And another Egyptian asked him, why, are you going to kill us like you killed that man? And he thought nobody seen it, and he ran to the backside of the mountain. And there, for 40 years, he lived in harmony with that other woman, with his wife, and had two sons. And in it, a generation that came. And during that 40 years of preparation, he learned how to humble himself. He learned the nature of Christ. He learned the love of God that had. He learned. 
It doesn't take 40 years to fall in love with Jesus. It only takes a minute to make a decision. Your decision that you need to make, your affirmation that you need to speak every day is this. The word of God has final authority over my life. The word of God has final authority over my life. You won't cheat nobody. You won't beat nobody. You won't lie on it. You won't steal. Because the word of God has the final authority over my life. It's a conscious decision. That decision will bring down everything, every thought and imagination that wants to exalt itself over, over the word, over the knowledge of God. Let's go to Hebrews 4 and 17, I believe, or 4 and 12. I'm going to get there in one minute. 4 and 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing in the asunder of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and of the marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Wow. That's a wow right there. In other words, God, he tries the heart. He reads the heart. He knows what you're thinking. You can't lie to God. You can lie to me. You can lie to each other. But you can't lie to God and think you're going to get away. It's just not going to happen. The word of God is like a sword. So this word that you're hearing right now, if you're not saved, it may irritate you, but it's cutting you. I cut you with this word. The word, not I cut you, but the word is cutting you when you hear it. And when it comes out, it's cutting you again. It's cutting, it's getting down to that soulish nature of your emotions where, uh, where somebody is saying, well, I'm not going to drag my kids to church like my mother drug me to Sunday school and drug me to YPP and drug me to Sunday service and drug me to midweek service. No, this, sir, this word is reminding you of the teachings that you were taught as a child and that you need to instill in your children. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's going to help somebody. That's going to irritate somebody, but that's okay. But that's the job of the word. It breaks up your foul ground. Let's go over here to Hosea 10 and 12. And the scripture reads as such. So to yourself in righteousness. Oh, my goodness. Why are we hearing so much about that word today? And the topic is not about righteousness, but righteousness is, is, <laughs> is so much like God. It's the character of God. It's God's behavior. How are we talking about God? So we got to be talking about righteousness. How are we going to separate that? How am I going to have a face if I said I have a face if I don't have two eyes and a nose and a mouth and two ears? Mm. That constitutes a face. If I don't have none of those things, I just got a blank space in front of me. I don't know if you would call it a face. It would be just blank. I don't want to be blank. I don't want to be void. I've been living in ignorance for too long without the knowledge of God that can raise you up from the pit that you were in and put your feet on solid ground. It's time to move forward, people. I don't care how old you are. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how wealthy you are. Without the word of God, you are lost. You're lost. Donald Trump cannot pay for the gift of salvation. Don't matter. 
What will a man do to gain the whole world and to lose his soul? I'm not bashing about you having money. I'm not saying that. It's good. Money answers all things. That's the word of God. It's the love of money that will mess you up. But the scripture is saying here, so to yourself. See, this is your job in righteousness, right standing with God. Reap in mercy. All you got to do is humble yourself and ask God to forgive you. Break up your follow ground. Redirect your behavior. For it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rain righteousness upon you. Oh, my goodness. The gift of salvation is not just life, it's godliness also. You're going to get a total package of benefits yet to be foreseen. There's over 8,000 promises in the Bible. I wish I could sit here and tell you I know every last one. I don't. But I know this one perfectly. I know if I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior, and I confess it with my mouth. I know for certainly I can be saved. I also know that if I believe and I live an orderly and a godly life by uh, obeying, being obedient to the word of God, that he would save my whole household. That means my children. I believe that. I believe according to Mark 16, 15, if, if I was to drink any deadly thing, it would not harm me. But I believe if I lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. That's the word. I believe. I believe in the word of God. There's hope today in the word of God. My confidence is in the word of God. If God says, I change my behavior and take that old behavior off and realize who I am because now I became a new creature, then now that I understand who I am, I'm a king I'm a daughter of the King Most High, or you a son of the King Most High, and that I'm a chosen generation, a peculiar people, not because I got blonde hair and wearing a red suit. That doesn't make me peculiar. The word of God makes me peculiar, not in a bad way, but it sets me apart, and it sets you apart from everything else. Don't get upset because your friends don't want to have you around. Why do when you come in the lunchroom? Everybody stop talking because you come in to eat lunch now. <laughs> they don't, because you're bringing in the presence of God. They're looking at their life and they look at you and they say, man, if she can live this, that means that there's no excuse for me. I don't have an excuse. That's why they're angry with you. They're not angry with you. They're angry of what you're bringing to the table. You've been in the presence of God. You have a relationship with the King of Kings and Lord of Lord. And yes, it's not only envious, but it also creates controversy. A friend of mine always put it like this. It's the struggle. <laughs> An inward battle, the struggle. A drama. But serving God shouldn't be a struggle. It's just the killing of your flesh. That's all it is. Let's go over here to James 1 and 12 right quick. Still talking about that helmet of salvation because you got to get your mind right. Tell yourself, get your mind right. Get your mind right. Get your mind right. James 1 and 12. Hmm, wow. Okay, James 1 and 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. You're being tested. You're being tried. You got your helmet pulled down. You got your breastplate on. The fiery joints are coming. The people that are closest to you are now acting up. Even the dog, when you walk in the door, want to growl at you. It's acting up. Everything is falling apart. Everything is things that you know now is not business as usual. Things are disarray, and you're trying to pull it back together. 
prayer. That's all it is. Your faith is on trial. Because now you've got your helmet on. You got your mind made up. The word of God is the final authority. So you got your helmet pulled down. You're not listening to a bunch of naysayers. You can't do this. You can't do that. You squash that. You said, look, I'm moving forward in things of God, whether you like it or not. That's not my problem. I know that God has a plan for my life. And I'm going to pursue that to the end of the purpose that he has for me. My destiny is calling and waiting for me. And I'm going to pursue that. Now that your heart is covered and your mind is made up, your heart is covered and it's renewed. It's renewed with the word. It's renewed with excitement because greater is he that is in you that is in the word. It's renewed because God says that you're more than a conqueror. To be more than a conqueror means you've already overcome. So you are moved with compassion and you are ready now to, to possess the land. You heard the, you received the, the information from God or the download as you were in prayer, praying to God, asking him, what would you have me to do today? What are the plans that you have for my life? How do I pursue that? You made your list. You made your plan. You begin to strategize by praying for your family. Get you a piece of paper. Write down everybody's name or a situational problem that troubles you and begin to petition God in prayer. Begin to go to Colossians, the first chapter, 9 through 12. Begin to insert those people's names there and call them out because when you begin to call out that prayer for them, that's asking that the knowledge that they will become uh, filled with the knowledge of God, the knowledge of God knowing when to act, when to move, the knowledge of God, falling in love with God, knowing his mannerism, his characteristic, the knowledge of God. You have to spend time with God in order to develop the knowledge of God. It has to be revealed to you, layer upon layer. Things have to be revealed to you. When you're in a relationship with a husband and wife, you don't know everything about that person. Oh, yeah, you courted them, but you don't know that maybe they like their eggs uh, crisp on the edges and run. You don't know how they like it, but as you spend time with that person, you will learn their ways. You will know that they like their eggs a certain way. You know they like their steak medium well. You know that they like, um, uh, maybe they like uh, crispy toast, and you like your toast lightly brown, but they want it almost dark, almost burnt on the edges. You will know that because you spent time with that person, the knowledge of Christ. They will come into the, into the knowledge of Christ knowing whatever they did before they received Christ that is under the blood as long as they made their confession, the knowledge of God, knowing that their past cannot destroy their purpose, cannot destroy their presence because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. They will understand that the love of God passes all understanding. They will begin to know the knowledge of God. And when the knowledge of God is real, then the righteousness of God will be revealed. Come on, somebody. Why? Because you know you're learning the character of God, and now you're putting it on, which is the righteousness of God. You're on the right side of God. You're on the obedient side of God. You're the one they're pursuing and want to act out accordingly to the ways of God. Come on and just give God a good God bless. Because you want to be in his will. In his will. Not my will, but thine will be done, O oh Lord. Not my will, but thine will. Lord, what would you have us to do today? Where would you want us to go today? Who would you want us to call? What about that old auntie that you haven't talked to since last Thanksgiving? What about your neighbor next door that you barely speak to? You throw your hand up just, just in case they may see you or hoping they don't see you. What about that? What about that little child that comes and every time they see you, Hi, Miss Sadie. 
They don't know what to say. All they know is just to call your name. Hi, hi. Every time they see you, they're just so excited. They just want to see you. What about that extra 10 seconds? Just a smile. Just a smile. A smile doesn't cost you nothing. But to smile, the joy of the Lord is your strength. God did not give you a spirit of fear, but love, power, and sound mind. A sound mind, free of worry, free from harm, free from depression, free from discouragement, free from being brokenhearted, free from being downtrodden. I know that's none of y'all, but in just in case, if I, if I hit some of the lines of the phrase, free from fear, the false evidence appearing real, because there is no weapon that is formed against you that shall prosper. Isaiah 55 and 11, but my word shall not go forth void, but it shall prosper. In other words, God said, when I speak, it's going to happen whether you believe it or you don't. My word is sovereign. It will happen. If God said he going to give you a yellow egg with blue polka dots on it, just keep on looking. I don't know what story you're going to find it. I don't know who's going to bring it to you. But if he promised you a yellow egg with blue dots, just get ready. It will happen. It will happen, and it may even come from a red hen. <laughs> Just to show you who he, who you working with, who you dealing with here. <laughs> the most unexpected thing happens. See, you got to dare to believe God for some of them and suddenly. I'm looking every day for an and suddenly. Where you at? Where you at? The scripture says, and surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. All the days. So I need to slow down a little bit just in case you're looking for me because I'm right here looking and waiting for you. But while I'm waiting, I'm going to serve God. I'm not going to be just sitting waiting on the dock of the bay. I'm going to be pursuing God. <laughs> I'm going to be pursuing him. Okay, we have a few more minutes. And um, I kind of got a little ahead of myself. Unfortunately, I get excited, and that's one of my downfalls. But I'm working on it. Okay, I'm still a I'm 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 still a work in progress. So don't don't be mad at me. Charge it against my heart and not my head. Um, let's see. I'm gonna run over here to. Uh, I did First Thessalonians. Okay, 2 Corinthians, we got that one. We got James 4 and 7 by submitting ourselves unto God. Okay, this is what God is saying. I've been talking about righteousness. Well, I have and he has, the word has. And you're out here, someone saying, well, what is this righteousness? It's, you keep talking about standing on the right side of God. Okay, what are you saying? Let's go to Galatians. And the whole fifth chapter you need to read for yourself. But let's talk about what God says in regard to righteousness. He says in 518, he says, but if you be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. And so he's talking about the works of the flesh, verse 18 and 19 and 21. But I'm going to start with 21. I'm going to go back and pick up the rest, but I want to start here to get a running jump. Verse 5 and 21, Galatians says, Envy, murdering, drunkenness, reveling, and such the like of these, which I tell you before, as I've told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not, shall not 
inherit the kingdom of God. Wow. That's a wow. Shall not inherit. So maybe I need to go back because I, I don't, I don't want to leave nothing now because that might not be you, but maybe some of these characteristics, maybe your behavior may fall up to that. So let's go back up to, let's, let's get a running start. And let's start with 13, 5 and 13. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not your liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Put a pen in it right there. There's another apostle who always say, put your weight on it. <laughs> put your weight on it. Put your weight on it right there. Love your neighbor. It's not a suggestion because God is love. You got to love. And, 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 and check this out. This is so cool about God, about being in righteousness. See, you as a believer, you're going to love people who don't even like you. My God from heaven. I'm going to say that slow. You have the ability to love people who don't even like you. I know that for a fact. I know that for a fact. And your lifestyle brings conviction upon them people. I know that I'm going to just do a quick synopsis. I had worked for this lady in sales. And she was just gotten the promotion as head manager. But prior to that, we were both agents. And the problem was this. We just clashed. She had a big week one week. I have a big week next week. We just seem to go like that. And then sometimes we have another one and a, a, a good week together and we'd be like 40 cents difference on who had the best week. Well, she always had a little nasty attitude. I walk in the room and she, mm, eh, eh. I'm like, what's wrong with you? So as I was beginning to pray, I said, Lord, help her, save her, send her somebody that can teach her about the love of Christ. And lo and behold, this still small voice said, I did, I sent you. I said, <coughs> the devil is a lie. <coughs> I said, huh? I said, Lord, forgive me. I know I did hear you correctly. I'm, but I'm going to tell y'all the truth. This will make, make y'all laugh, or I don't know if it make you think less of me or not. But it's a true fact. I said, Lord, this woman doesn't even like me. How is she going to receive anything that I'm going to say? And he politely said, that's my business. Just make yourself available so when the time comes, you're ready to give her the answers that she needs. I let it go. Two weeks later, she got the promotion. She became my immediate, the regional director over our area, but she also had a staff, and I was under her, lo and behold. And I was saying, Lord, help a child out because I know this is not going to be an easy transition. It was easier than pie. She asked me to come into her office a little bit earlier than everybody else. She instructed me that we would be working for the day, and she wanted to go over my records and watch how I promote myself and how I act accordingly, and uh, she wanted to understand how I work. So that was not a problem. I said, no problem. When we get into the car, I'm still playing my gospel music. I haven't changed. She said, ain't that so-and-so? I go, yeah. She said, oh, I went to high school with them. I said, yeah. Next thing I know, we went about the day. The woman did not ask me one question about work. She wanted to know, how did you receive Christ? She wanted to understand about the love of Christ. I was so blown away. I had to take a bathroom break and ask God, to forgive me. See, we don't need to worry about the how. We just need, like he asked me, when the time comes, make yourself available. Then the lady, God bless, she began to just give me business. I had, my sales was down low one week. She wrote some business. She was always good salesman, really good salesman. She'd write some business and throw it my way. She said, here, you need a few hundred dollars. Your, your sales are going to pick up, but you need to do this, this, and this. I see where you're slipping in that area. You're not doing this, but you need to improve in this area. I go, yeah. And, I mean, they wouldn't be, like, little little bit of money. I mean, like, she would throw me bonuses, like, oh, $500 from stuff that she wrote that I would make. And I'd be all excited, but 
I say all of this to say this, at the end of the campaign, she won number one manager, and she got up and she gave the credit to God, Vessel, which was me. And I was the only person who was just standing in the gap praying for her salvation. You never know who God will put in your way to be that voice. You can love people who don't like you. Listen, listen, listen. I'm excited. I know I, I got a little bit off the subject about the helmet of salvation and the weapons of mass destruction, but there's one thing that was an underlying current. You pull down the strongholds of war against your mind and your helmet will fit just fine. You keep your heart, your eyes, and your ear gate covered. Stay on the defense. Protect yourself with the weapons of mass destruction that God has given you. Read Ephesians 6, start at verse 10, going down to 16. But I got another one for you. Being confident in this very thing, that he that began a good work in you will complete it at the coming of Christ Jesus. I am excited for you, you and you, and especially you, because you heard the word. And you good ground. You know why? Because you tune in every week. That's what I'm saying. You tuning in and you're hearing the word. You're growing thereby. And guess what? You are better than you was last week. And now you got something else to put in your arsenal. And you're going to be even better. I am excited about you. I'm excited what God is doing with the preparation in your life. Getting you in position. For your purpose and your destiny. It's great. God does things on a big order. We serve a big God. And he does big things. And the biggest thing that he's ever done for you. If he never ever 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 do anything else. Was to be Lord of your life. And saved you from destruction itself. Again my name is Pastor Sadie Thompson. Co-pastor of He Is Risen World Outreach Ministries located in the beautiful city of Church Point, Louisiana. We're located at 122 South Main Street, directly across from Sonic and the White Building. We ask that you come and join us on Sundays mornings at 11 a.m., where the Bishop Albert Ray Thompson will be going forth exalting the word of God. And remember, greater is he that is in you. Jesus love you, but I love you so. And there's nothing you can do about it. I want you to have the best week. I want you to be girded up. I want you to rise up. I want you to be proactive. But I want you to love yourself and to love your neighbor. And to know that love is the greatest gift that you'll ever receive or the biggest gift that you could ever give. <laughs> Enjoy your life because life is good. And when life is good, you will rise to the occasion and know for an assurity that Jesus loves you. And I do too. Again, get your helmet of salvation on. Pull it down tight. You can't hear any foolishness from the enemy. You're going to be suited and booted. You're going to be armed and dangerous with the word of God. And remember, only what you do for Christ will last. It's exciting to see the growth that you will, you will achieve. It will be more greatly advantageous to see how your children will prosper from not just this generation to the next generation. And that you are bringing forth Christians in the world to live the overcoming life. Being more than a conqueror. Being courageous. A chosen generation. That's who you are. That's what Jesus calls us. A chosen. You were chosen. You, he called you by your name. And he didn't get your name mixed up with my name. And he called you beloved. He called you the apple of his eye. And he loves you. And if there was nobody else in this world but you, he would have yet died just for you. That's good news right there. That is excellent news. I'm winding up now. I believe we have one minute. 
one minute to say I love you, I appreciate you, give me a call next week. Call in and let me know how you're feeling. Call in for some prayer knowing that Jesus is the answer. Call in and let me hear your voice. Hopefully we're touching on subjects that we can have. Uh, I will have a guest speaker uh, next week, Mr. Arthur Jackson. I had him a while back. This is going to be a sequel to his book, Out of the Darkness. But listen, I need you to rise up, and I need you to rise again. Pastor Sadie Thompson saying, I love you, and have a blessed week. God bless. Bye-bye.